Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of our Duotone Wing and Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas and I'm standing here with the Spencer brothers, Finn and Jeffrey, um, our design team for our wing board range. And I'm pretty excited about this new board that we're adding to the range that's called the Skybrid SLS. Um, maybe Jeffrey, you start with uh, what's this board all about? I mean, it's longer, it's narrow, it's kind of a mid-length. Um, doesn't look like a wing board completely like how we know it. Um, tell me something about this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm extremely excited about this board because it's a, a brand new design. It really comes from how often we were riding the, the downwind boards in light winds for winging specifically. It, those downwind boards just had that efficiency to get going and this is a hybrid between a traditional wing board and one of those you know longer more efficient downwind boards it has a little more compact shape than the downwinders but it's got that narrow width and the length for that efficiency in the takeoff i mean a lot of people buy downwinder boards just for winging i think this the large majority of our customers buy stuff for light wind winging loving the efficiency um, and now we have a board that's targeted to exactly that type of rider um, I guess you'll need to be a little bit more experienced to ride these boards or are they as easy as the classic wing boards? Absolutely, yeah. These boards are, they're easy enough to ride, but they're definitely, they definitely take a little more skill than, you know, the, the basic super wide, super, uh, you know, floaty boards. They just, a little more stability and a little more, um, yeah, a little more experience. So more stability compared to the downwinder, which is narrow. Yeah. Um, but then the sky free, obviously, if you're start, just starting to, to wing foil, these are probably a little tippy. Um, maybe Finn, give us a few infos about um, the design features of this board. I mean, I know that you guys worked on quite a few prototypes um, over the last few months. And uh, I've seen boards with completely downwinder tails. I've seen different length, different width. So why did we end up with this shape here? Yeah, we, we went through a bunch of boards to get to this one, just long, narrow, weird nose and tails, like you said. Um, ended up on this one, kind of similar nose and tail look to the styles, but with the stretched outline of the downwinder, just right in the name of hybrid, kind of right in between the two. Um, super easy to get going on, but still very maneuverable once you're up and riding. And yeah, super happy with how these came out. Okay, so what did you copy from, let's say, from the downwinders, what did you copy from the wing boards? If you say it's a hybrid, you probably put everything in the blender. Exactly, and then... but yeah. So uh, we started kind of taking from the styles. We have the, the trined rails, just nice, smooth, getting, getting going in the water, reduce the drag a bit once you're up to speed. And then went with a single concave uh, bottom shape up front, sim same as on the downwinders, just we found that to be the most efficient at getting going when you're maybe underpowered or just really really need to get going easy. And then some new features, we have the cutouts in this board. Um, we really took those from like old windsurf race boards and- uh, Some kite race boards have yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah it's just, you, you keep kind of the same float and buoyancy when you're not moving, just because there's still board right above it. But once you get going, the, the drag is significantly reduced. And because you ride these this board especially a lot more in the middle of it and then it doesn't feel as kind of cumbersome when you're up and riding mm -hmm. and then you just want to reduce that drag a bit behind the foil and yeah. behind the tail. I remember we when, when I was here last for testing we had some of these protos and we had some that had a full downwinder tail and this one just added the like the kneeling stability especially when it gets really choppy rough conditions it was way easier to get up on these but the efficiency to get going we found was the same right for sure yeah and then also we have you can see we have the new longer carbon boxes on this board just we ride this board with so many different foils like the whiz the carves or the glide so you really just want that versatility of where you can place it and just where you want to ride the board and then with the carbon boxes new for this year they just reducing a lot of a lot of the weight which is very important on a board like this when you're really easy. trying to get going and as easy as possible and yeah, just seems to help out a lot. Yeah, talking about weight, this board is fairly light. It's built in the uh, like full Biax carbon. We have a new Biax carbon layup this year with a full PVC wrap. So it's like the high top end construction we have in the range, um, which with a new finish, which basically reduces an extra layer of coating, 
Um, and then the whole technology is like way lighter this year. Um, yeah, I love the look of it too, with just the carbon showing through and then the yeah. light paintwork. It, exactly, yeah, it looks, looks great. Looks neat. Um, so you were talking about different foils. So what's your favorite foil you ride in this one? Probably my favorite foil is the Wiz 850. I just love riding in little waves. It's super turny, pumps really well, but also super easy to get going on with this board. And then um, sometimes ride, I've been riding some race foils on it recently, just especially in lighter wind when you really want to ride a small foil. It's extra length and a narrower outline just helps you get going a lot. And then once you're up to speed, it's not as wide, so it's easier to maneuver around. Mm -hmm. So you ride this mainly strapless or you ride strapped up? I usually ride strapless. Occasionally I'll put straps on if I want to race a bit or do some little jumps, but yeah, mostly right. strapless. But mainly is not really a board for jumping. I guess. Yeah, no, no, not mainly not. Okay. Jeffrey, what about you? What's your favorite size on these on this range? We have five sizes from 55 to 115. Yeah, I love I love riding the 85 liter. At my weight, it's a size that I can I can take this board out and just fully float and stand on on the water. And for me, that reliability and that ease of uh, getting going is is the best part of the Skybreed. And I yeah, I just I know I can always get get on foil when I uh, take out take out the board. Cool. So we have all the footstrap options for everyone who wants to have footstrap riding. Um, you guys recommend riding strapless, but I, I guess it really also depends on the on the preference, on the style of the foil as well. The Wiz is a foil, for example, that likes to be ridden strapless. Um, I can really, I'm really excited about this board. The efficiency is like really close to the downwinders, but it, you don't have all that swing weight on all that length. You have the options, all the foot straps and all that. So if you get a chance, really try one of these. Um, we have first real world feedback from people that are really happy about uh, how these came about. And uh, yeah, thanks for all these infos, guys. Um, really looking forward to get these released and uh, get real market feedback, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be awesome. Uh, great job on these. If you guys like this content, give us a like, subscribe, comment if you have questions on this range, because yeah, it's a new range, it's very special, and uh, we're really excited about it. The boys are gonna reply to you, so um, yeah, I hope you'll be following us and uh, see you in the next episode.